Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another Wallet Making Wednesday. Today, we're going to be doing the fourth and final major component for our composite wallet here, and that is the modular back lid. Very simple CAM operation. There's only three operations, uh, some circular boring here, and we're going to be using 2D contour to mill out these two pockets, as well as the 2D contour on the outside edges with the focus on good feed rate optimization to make sure that this part is especially accurate because it has to fit nice and flush on this outside edge here. We're also going to be laser cutting our two inserts for your credit card. Let's remove these binding posts, remove the top plate. So that's one top insert. Then underneath the card is the second insert we're going to be laser cutting. All right, so let's quickly jump into the cam. Okay, so here we have our palette of modular back lids for the composite wallet. We're going to start off with the boring operation for these four screw holes here. And when you approach a, a thin part like this, it's best to start with any type of drilling operation first because that's when the stock material is going to be especially solid. Whereas if you cut out the outside edge first, then you might get some deflection when you're boring into this material. So we're gonna to go to drilling and plug in our cutting feed rate values. We're gonna use 600 for our geometry. Just select the four hole faces. For our heights, our top height is just going to be the whole top, bottom height. I'm going to set that to negative two millimeters. Now our cycle, we're going to select bore milling with a pitch of 0 0.3 millimeters to make sure that first cut into the carbon fiber is nice and shallow so we don't get any type of tearing. And we're using 632 screws to secure this plate. So we're going to increase the diameter to about four millimeters just to make sure there's enough space to screw those fasteners in nicely. All right, we're going to hit OK. And that's our first operation. Our second operation is going to be a 2D contour. And we're going to start off, well, let's start with our feed rates. So our cutting feed rate is going to be 600. Our ramp feed rate, I'm going to increase this to 800 because we're going to be ramping into the material. Our geometry is just going to be these two contours for each of these pockets. Our heights tab, we're going to select stock bottom and set the offset to, again, negative 2 to make sure that we get a nice edge finish on the reverse side of the stock material. In our passes tab, we're going to turn on smoothing. And in our linking tab, the most important part here is to turn on the ramp. And we're going to set our ramping angle to about 3 degrees. We're going to hit OK. So there's our ramping tool path. And we can see that it's actually starting a little bit high. So to save some time, we're going to go back in and set our ramp clearance height to something like one millimeter. So our ramp is going to start a little bit closer to our stock material now. All right, and our next operation, or our last operation, is going to be 2D contour again. So I'm going to actually just duplicate the existing 2D contour because we're using the same tool. Our cutting feed rate, we're going to increase this to 800. And our plunge feed rate, we're going to turn this down to 50. For our geometry, we're going to deselect our previous contour and just select the outside edge here. We're going to turn on tabs. Instead of by distance, we're going to use at points. 
and we're just going to use two tabs to secure this material. A tab here, and a tab on this side. Now, because our height is, our bottom height is negative two millimeters, we're going to set our tab height to about three millimeters. Our tab width, change that to four millimeters. So you can see here, the tab will go up about one millimeter into the stock. Our passes tab, we're going to turn on feed right optimization. I'm going to slow this down to about half speed, 400 millimeters per minute. I'm going to turn off inside corners. I reduced speed right distance. We're going to put this to two millimeters beforehand. And our radius is something nice and high, like four. And hit OK. OK, so this is the tool path that's been generated. And we see that when we have that reduced speed right distance set to two, that means the tool will slow down, start slowing down two millimeters before it approaches the radius. So we see that we're actually missing a few radii here, uh, this corner, this corner. So if you find that happens, then you have to go back into the operation and increase your reduced feed radius. So let's increase this to say seven millimeters and see what that gets us. Okay, so now we're starting to catch all of these corners. One last thing I'm going to adjust is instead of the ramp from the previous operation, and this is something you just have to be careful about when you start duplicating operations, um, be sure to check you have the lead in and lead outs that you actually want. So we're going to specify an entry position right over top of our tab and hit OK. All right, so that's going to be our lead in. All right, so that looks good. Let's quickly simulate it. I'm going to turn on stock, set mode to tail. So the main things you're watching for in simulation are mainly for any type of rapid collision. We don't have any fixture fasteners um, in, in the path of this operation, so there's really nothing to be worried about. Now we can see that the tool does approach this, fast, uh, this fixture screw here, but because I, I left my sketch for the fixture on, and I put these blue lines here as the outside radius of the of the fixture screw. I can easily see that we're going to clear this screw no problem. So there's nothing to worry about there. All right, that's a very quick cam operation for our modular backlid. Let's uh, go head over to the CNC mill, and after we check out the milling, we're also going to check out the laser cutting of our insert, um, our insert material, which is a, an aluminized G10 material, as well as a molybdenum disulfide coated nylon, which is essentially a low, a low friction charcoal gray nylon that we're also using for the inserts. Thanks a lot for watching.